welcome to Caring Connections. I'm Sally Gibney. You know, each time we, we acknowledge somebody with a smile, a wave, a nod, a card, we make a caring connection. So often we don't even realize we're making a caring connection. I recently received an email from a soldier in Afghanistan telling me that he had received a caring coin and a card signed by one of our high school students in our local high school. He told me how he was wearing his caring coin with his dog tags and how much the note from that student meant to him. It also meant a lot to the other soldiers in the unit who also received caring coins with cards from students. You know, so often we just don't know how much that caring connection means. Today my guests are, I'm so happy to have my guests who are going to share with us just how much caring connections have meant to our troops, our veterans, and also our wounded warriors. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce Bill Weeks. Hi, Bill. Morning. How are you, Sally? And you are? I'm Bill Weeks, commander of the VFW, uh, Post 6471 in Manchester. Um, lived here all my life in Manchester for 63 years and um, been probably 40 years as an officer of some sort at the VFW. Great. Well, that's, working, so. that's great, and thank you. And I'd like to also introduce Chris Dante. Hi, Chris. Hello. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name's Chris Conti. Uh, I grew up in East Dorset. I live in Wynn Hall now. Uh, I was discharged from the military in July after serving for four years. And, uh, and you served in? served in Afghanistan with the 10th Mountain Division uh -huh. uh, for one year in 2009. Wow. Well, we're really glad to have you here. Bill, would you tell us just a little bit about what the VFW is doing and the impact that it's having? Well, the VFW, we have a lot of projects we have to do to stay with the bylaws mm -hmm. of the national. We have our programs like community service programs where we do things for the community and donate money or help do fundraisers for the community. We have Americanism program where we um, <clears throat> help the school kids with flags or teach them what the etiquette of a f raising the flag mm -hmm. or what the flag is. Um, then we have our youth activity programs um, where we support like the Cub Scouts Pack 333, Little League baseball teams. Oh, really? And whatever, anybody comes to us and requests a donation in either one of those things there, we, we try to do our best to help them out. That's so neat. I don't think a lot of people realize how much the VFW does, that it's not just about the veterans, of course, but it's also about the whole community. Well, we, we do a lot more than people do realize, you're correct. And, um, we try to let people know we never blow our horn enough. We've been kicking ourselves in the butt for years for not doing that, and yeah. we're finally trying to do it now because people, I hate to say this, but people over the years have considered us maybe just as a bar, oh, a you canteen, mean, you know, uh -huh. not realizing how much we do do for the community. Uh -huh. So we're trying to get that point out so we can get more support from the community, which has happened pretty good here in the last couple of years. That's We've had the chamber help us out and different people. So, And tell us a little bit about what you do for the veterans. Well, when the veterans come home, we try to get a hold of them. We try to get them joined naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a service officer who will ask them if they have any problems, or service-connected problems, and he'll work with them to try to get them through the VA clinics or the VA hospital or in White mm -hmm. River. Um, help them fill out papers. I'm sure that uh, makes a huge difference, doesn't it? Not to just come home and be totally alone and not know what to do. It does because a lot of people don't realize all these benefits are out there for them. Uh -huh. And you hear a lot on the news where the government is doing so much for veterans. Well, don't believe all of it yeah, <laughs> because, yeah. you know, you know we firsthand. have to fight hard. That's why we're, it's such importance for us to have our membership we have 335 members now, and to get all of our members so we can have numbers so when they go to Washington to lobby for benefits for our veterans, you know, so our membership is really important to us down there, so. And it's really, you're letting them know they're not alone. Definitely not they're alone. Definitely not definitely alone. Not alone. It has, and it's, I'm sure it's very much appreciated. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Chris, tell us a little bit about, you were in Afghanistan. And um, how, how, whoa, was it uh, when you came back? First of all, while you were there, how important is it that people <coughs> reach out to 
you guys and gals over there to, for you to know that you're not alone. You know, it's very important. Uh, you know, you go months without you know, communication, so you get the mail. It's great. You know, I got a letter one time from the family I was best friends with growing up and hadn't talked to in years. Really? And, you know, just people about reaching out, and you know, it's nice. And that meant a lot to you, I'm sure. Well, very much. I mean, you get the letters from your mom all the time, and those are great. Uh -huh. But when you get letters from, you know, a high school friend or something like that. So you really encourage people to do that? Very much. You know, I still write to friends in Afghanistan, you know, friends who are still over there. Uh, over Christmas, so I got the East Dorset Post Office. They um, I helped them out. They started up gathering packages and sending them to my friend, oh, who's nice. a team leader, so he could disperse everything out to members of you know, his team. Now, you were telling me you got some carrying coins. Yes, my uh, entire platoon. Um, we all got those. And that's things, things like that are great because, you know, mail only comes every month or so. Oh, is that right? Well, you know, if you're out in the, out, <laughs> you're out out, in the field. Well, if you're on yeah. an outpost, you right. know, um, so it comes in the helicopter and... Uh, if, it doesn't, if you don't get mail, you know, it's just it be. terrible. Yeah. And a lot of guys, it happens to them, you know, every couple mail trips. And so things like that, everyone gets mail, you know, and it's nice. So you really encourage people to, to send out those boxes and have things in the boxes that the, the troops can share with their unit. And it's very isolating being over there. You know, you read the news, you know, 1% of America find the wars impo important to them come this election season. You know, 20% uh, of Americans actually pay attention to the wars at all. You know, you, you just feel very alone, and it's nice uh, yeah. when people do things like that. Yeah, and I think that that's really important for us to get the message out there that our guys and gals are over there and making sacrifices for us, and just a simple little card, a simple like these kids that, that signed the cards that went on the coins that went over, it really does have an impact. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's important for us to, to remember. And what about when you were coming, when you came home, and the impact of the VFW for you? Um, well, when I first I came home in uh, December 2009, and uh, I was still in the military, so I shouldn't had nothing to do with the VOW for the first couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got out, uh, one of the first things I did was join as a VOW, join the members membership. And uh, when I went to White River Junction to fill out all my paperwork, they also have a VFW liaison up there as a not permanent office, and she helped me you know do all the paperwork and submit everything. You know, and I'm, you know, I'm still waiting, <laughs> and so, you know, so yeah. our v, our VFW right now is actually looking into that of why I'm still waiting. Yeah. So you know, it's nice having someone to help you with the VA because they're not very single person friendly. Mm -hmm. But as Bill said, you know, large numbers equal results. You know, yeah. you have an organization that has, you know, hundred thousand members or so. I'm not actually sure how many we have, but uh, yeah. you know, that means something. Yeah. So Bill, tell us a little bit more. About Oh, it was Chris is speaking of the service officer. A couple of times, well, once a year at least, we have a service officer from the state come to our VFW here in town, <clears throat> and we invite all veterans, even though they're not veterans of the VFW uh -huh. or veterans of foreign wars, they're still veterans, um, to come and see and talk to the service officer. If they have prob medical problems, they can talk to him, and most of the time there's a chance of getting a benefit uh -huh. from from the service officer because you know he really knows the paperwork and where to look the loopholes to look for to help these people out so yeah. so the importance of caring <coughs> connections that um, for the individuals and for the group I'm sorry say the importance of caring can of people reaching out and and you encourage people to reach out right to each other definitely we you know we that's one of the things why we're trying to get better recognized out in the community right now so that they can reach out and ask questions about the veterans coming home and uh -huh. what they can do to help. For instance, here this past Christmas, someone from the soldiers home, a nurse that works down there, uh -huh. came up with the idea that all the veterans, there was 250, 240-some-odd veterans in the soldiers home. Down in Bennington? In Bennington. Oh, my goodness, I didn't realize there were that um, many. So we, all the time at Christmas time, try to do something for them, but this year, someone come up with the idea of putting up a Christmas tree with 600 yellow stars on it. Wow. With each patient down there putting on it what he needs for Christmas, like PJs or sweatpants or sweatshirt or socks or whatever. So we sort of like they all made their own little list. Right. So we put these on a tree, uh -huh. and we had all of the members at the post took some, and that would be the person they would buy for. Uh -huh. 
And when on Veterans Day ceremony, we had a lot of the community and the club at the time, so we had also got a lot of people from the community to come in and took some stars to purchase some gifts. Find up, and we, yeah, finally took down, I think it was over six, between six and seven, six and seven hundred gifts to the oh soldiers. Oh my home. gosh. Isn't Roughly that around $7,000 worth of what we figured out. So, uh, and they really appreciate it. A whole bunch of us, about 20 of us from the club took them down uh -huh. and took them room to room to each patient. And, and they absolutely, and, oh, they, they absolutely they, they were happy. Uh, and you know, one of the things is encouraging our youth to know mm -hmm. about our veterans and also to know about our, our troops and whatever. And you you have the essay, don't you? We Did have you? a couple of essays. We have a Patriot's Pen essay and we have a Voice of Democracy essay. Uh -huh. The Patriot's Pen is for the 7th and 8th graders in grade school and depending on what national comes up with for a heading for the essay, they write on. Um, normally we have 60, 70 kids from um, Dorset, uh, Manchester, Arlington, uh, the Maple Street School, and over the last two years, two years ago we had a young man who won the dark post level, won district level, state level, and then he went to national, and I think out of about 24,000 young people, he came in eighth place. Wow, that's pretty impressive. And this past year we had a young man from Dor um, Dorset, he came in fourth place in national out wow. of that many people. I know one of the girls who helped um, when we did a, a Let's Connect program, uh, one of the girls, we, the kids went down with us to the veterans' home and they shared carrying coins with the veterans. And they were so surprised to hear the stories. Many of them had never heard the war stories. And, and they sat and listened to these stories and they were so impressed with it that one of the girls wrote about it mm -hmm. with your VFW. She was a voice of democracy girl. Yeah, uh, I yeah. forget her name now. And she won the state. Right. Which is yes, so, yes. so great. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just, just so uh, impressive. So you also are encouraging our youth to reach out. We do. We when we try to hand out little booklets, like I say, on the etiquette of flag folding and how to handle the flag and different little items like that, we ask them to, you know, talk about it or come to the post sometime. They're welcome to the post anytime and ask questions. Yeah. You know, they, they're welcome to use the post anytime. They, they'll have like a fundraiser for a dance. Oh, that's you know, neat. You know, they're more, we try to encourage them to use the post for oh, that. That's so. great. That's good. You yeah. know, I think um, we don't realize the kids are great. They, it's amazing what they can do, you know, and I think if we just give them the opportunity, mm -hmm. they just come to the fold. Mm -hmm. Chris, do you have anything else you'd like to share with us about, you know, the impact of, of people caring? Just that it's important. It's important and, uh, you know, it's limitless. Yeah. You know, every day people can surprise you. Absolutely. And we just encourage everybody to, to keep, keep doing it. And, and uh, you all can help give them ideas and what they can do to help, you know, our veterans, our troops, which is just so important, and, and our, our returning wounded. So I want to thank you both so much for being here. This has been so great. And I, I'm sure folks in the community are going to be excited. And I'm hoping they're going to come into the VFW. Well, I hope so. Because, again, we're, we're a post. We're out there for the community. We're Absolutely. not just... So we will do what we can for the community. I'm so delighted that I have gotten to know you because this well, has been really cool. And Chris, thank I'm you, so Sally. Glad you. I'm so glad you got those coins. That's really <laughs> neat. And I would like you guys to please sign a coin because it's going to go on our tree. And I also have a coin for you. Well, if I can find Here we go. If you would just sign your name on that. And Chris, if you would just sign your name on that. And that will go on our little carrying coin tree. Thank you, sir. And of course, you do have a coin, but here's an, I another I got a coin for you. <laughs> and I wanted to give you an I Matter one. Did I give you an I Matter one already? Here we go. Thank That's not the I Matter one. Give you another one. Um, Thank you. Thank you so much. And I did go to a meeting, and we, we are going to donate some money to you for your coin things. So. Oh, that's wonderful. Uh -huh. And you know, uh, we're, we're working with so many more of the schools and the kids are signing coins, uh -huh. the cards, and, and we're sending them out to the units of someone within the school so that it's a way of giving our kids an opportunity to reach out and also remembering 
our guys and gals over there. So well, once again, thank you so much for being well, here. Well, thank you this for what so you're cool. doing with Chris, these two. Sorry. Thank you so much. This has been fun. Hi, welcome back. I'm so thrilled to have with me Betsy Hurley and Joe Hurley from the BART Adaptive Sports Center up at Bromley Mountain. Hi, Betsy. Hello. Thank you for being here. Thanks for having me. Now, tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, I started skiing um, about 20 years ago. Wow. I was in adaptive sport, an adaptive sports program here in Vermont. Um, I've been part of the BART Center uh, at Bromley for the last nine years. So really, really has grown and been great to be a part of. I uh, teach a lot of lessons up there for them and also work on my personal skiing, my racing career. Now you've just been re racing recently, haven't you? I sure have. I've traveled a little bit um, to, through New England. I've made a few trips out west. Wow. Um, but yes. Oh, I'd love to see you. <laughs> that, that's a lot. It takes a lot of training, doesn't it? Sure does. A lot yeah. of time and commitment. Yeah. And you have to keep in shape, don't you? Sure do. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to talk about that. Joe, hi. How hi, are you? Thank, hi, Sally. Good to see you. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I started the Adaptive Sports Center about nine years ago at Bromley um, with the help of my family and friends. Um, I've been teaching adaptive sports for almost 22 years now. Wow. So I've, you know, I've had a little bit of time on the hill with some people, with a lot of great people with um, all sorts of different disabilities. Um, you do amazing things. Thank you. Um, we have a lot of fun, and yeah. we play, and, uh, but we try, to, um, we try to incorporate a lot of um, skills into our playtime. Mm -hmm. But what I call our playtime is skiing. Skiing's play, yeah. but it's fun. Oh, that's so. really great. Now, we have a big event coming up, don't we? Yes. Um, for the past six years, um, we've been doing an event. It's now called the um, Wounded Military Heroes Weekend. We bring in um, soldiers from that soldiers that from across the country, from all over that have been injured in um, the uh, current conflicts and wars in of Af Afghanistan and Iraq and, and stuff. Um, these soldiers could range from a physical disability as loss of limb or a spinal cord injury, or they may have a hidden disability like uh, PTSD or There's they could have TBI. There's a lot of that, isn't there? There is a lot of that. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people, they think of the wounded military or wounded heroes as being physically disabled, having a loss of limb or something. And sometimes the guys and gals that have the PTSD or TBIs, traumatic brain injuries, mm -hmm. um, these people are, are equally as injured. And um, The hard, difficult thing is that they look the same. Sure. You know, and because they look the same, even their families and friends, they, they don't understand what is going on inside their head, and, and that has to be so difficult. So for them to have an opportunity to come, and, and they bring their families too, don't they? Yes, we, um, they bring their families. Um, usually husbands, wives come with them. They, they, one guest, we have a couple families that are coming that have young children that they're wow. coming with us with this year equally as well. So we have 14 soldiers coming this year, um, and there's many soldiers coming from... New England area, New York, um, Massachusetts, um, that area. And there's some coming in from Arkansas, Tennessee, um, wow. and across the Midwest. Florida. Florida, equally as well. Um, wow. So it should be, um, it should be a fun-filled weekend. Could you share with us um, the impact of the volunteers reaching out and making care and connections? to the troops and their families? Um, what we see is that we see um, year after year the volunteers that keep returning, which is really awesome, mm -hmm. but they also stay in contact throughout the course of the year. Really? Um, we do a housing families for um, all our soldiers, so they all stay in individual homes throughout the area, throughout the region, and what we have found is that that connection stays uh -huh. year after year after year. And many of the soldiers, like there's um, five or there's seven soldiers that are returning this year, those seven have asked, the housing family wants those guys to come back to them, and they've also asked to go back. So it's really kind of nice to see that connection throughout the community that, you know, these people have reached out, and it's kind of neat. And, and also, how can people in the community come and help you with what's going on? Don't you have a lot of people who just come for the day and, and volunteer? We have some volunteers that come in for just a day to help. They um, could be an on-the-hill assistant. They could help with just... Um, you know, help the instructors that go through a lot of training. Um, I mean, my instructors go through anywhere from six to seven days of training throughout the course of the season just to be able to, you know, get a pretty good handle on what's going on. 
Um, so we ask that, um, you know, if people want to come in and volunteer, there's always jobs to do. Uh, there's always tasks, whether it be just inside greeting people or whether it be actually assisting somebody out on the hill along with our instructors. Yeah. So there's a lot of different opportunities to uh, help. And it really makes a difference, doesn't it? Sure that, does. That little bit of volunteering. Mm -hmm. It's good for the volunteers and it's also good for um, the participants. I mean, there's definitely a family-like atmosphere up there. And I think sometimes the volunteers get more out of it than even the people that they're volunteering to. Absolutely. Or, yes. You know, it, it, it's really a, what, what is, looking at it, how does, how does it make you feel seeing the it, weekend? It makes me feel really warm and, and glad to have friends, glad to meet new people. Uh -huh. um, not, not being a vet myself, but um, just having people who have served and are here and, are, you know, it's just great to have them. And you're an inspiration to so many people. You're such a cool lady. <laughs> you really are. You just, it's, it's really neat. It must be fun kind of having a father-daughter kind of, and I know your wife is very involved as yep. well. Yes. Yeah. It is, yeah. It's been a lot of fun to be able to share, share these experiences and stuff with my family. Uh -huh. um, not only in the, in the fact of just being able to talk about it, but being, being able to share the physical experience of meeting these meeting a lot of these soldiers and being able to to do it together as a family it's been uh -huh. kind of cool it's been a lot of fun so it's making a huge difference not just here but all over the country correct absolutely. Um, yeah absolutely um, there's um, a lot of um, in the ski industry there um, in the adaptive ski industry there are several programs that host many events equally as well as ours does um, which makes it really nice, and, and not only in New England, but throughout the, throughout the U.S. Um, so these soldiers um, get many opportunities to be able to go to different places, maybe places they've never been. Right. Um, it's just, it makes it nice, and, you know, when the community can get behind it and, and, and help back it, help support it, is, is huge. You have a dinner, don't you, Joe? We have a dinner on Saturday evening in honor of the soldiers. Uh -huh. um, and, and that's hugely attended, isn't it? That's a huge dinner, it? yes. Yeah, yeah. How um, many people do you expect we, this year? We expect about 300 and, 335 or so. Um, wow. Is what we have listed right now, anyways. And you, where is it held? It's held at the Equinox. Uh -huh. um, I remember our first dinner six years ago was held at the VFW Hall which was a great place to ha host it, but unfortunately, but grown. <laughs> we've outgrown the yes. VFW Hall, which is, you know. Which is good. Which is good. Which is good. But it's a, fa you know, you know it's, um, it's a good event. It's a lot of fun, and um, there's people that come in because of the act of terrorism. They, ca they come in from New York and stuff that were personally, um, personally connected to that mm -hmm. act, and um, the, um, you know, there's a lot of singing going on and a lot of stuff going on. So it's a great So it's, it's another great opportunity for people to connect. Absolutely. Sure. You know, caring connections are made all around. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, it's just a very, very special time. Well, you must feel amazing about how it's grown. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. It's been, um, it's just, it's just a nice event and it keeps mm -hmm. growing year after year. Um, I basically say it takes on a life of its own yeah. and it has. And yeah. it's just, it, it's a lot of fun. To do. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun to do. Yeah. So it, and the, I also want to mention that the BART Center is not just for our veterans and wounded military heroes. It's also, you, you're year round, aren't you? Yes, we run year round programs. Um, we work with a lot of, we work with kids in the school communities um, throughout all the different areas around here for uh -huh. midweek um, skiing. Um, we have anywhere between 15 and 20 kids per week. Really? Um, every afternoon we have kids that come in um, with a disability that come in to ski it is part of the GIST program uh -huh. up at Bromley. Um, now what kind of disabilities are we? These are about? either physical, they could be physical or cognitive disabilities. Uh -huh. They could have autism or they could have Down really? syndrome or they could have a cerebral palsy or um, spinal bifida. Uh, there's many different disabilities that come into us. Um, you know of course we run the weekends and we have many people that come in for that. During the summertime we run a paddling and um, cycling programs where we get people with disabilities out on bikes riding, which is pretty wow, cool. Wow, that is pretty um, cool. And then we also you run... Yes. We, oh. yeah. <laughs> you um, have been such a, a big part of this, haven't you, Betsy? I have. And I've been here since day one. And I, I uh, don't mean to embarrass you, and I hope I'm not, but no. you have been such an inspiration because mm -hmm. having you there has been a gift. Mm -hmm. a, 
terrific gift for everyone who comes. Mm -hmm. You know, whether there's someone with a disability or not, you are an inspiration. And uh, I don't mean to embarrass nice. you, but, it, but okay. it's true. It's true, you know. And I, I think that all of this um, is a part of Caring Connections. We don't Absolutely. realize how often what we're doing yep. and the impact that it is having. You know, and I, I think you guys are just okay. absolutely great in the things you're doing. And I, I'm hoping that uh, we can come up in the uh, nice weather and, and do yes. a show with what you're doing up there then. You know, I think that mm -hmm. would be, would really... Is there anything else you'd like to share with our audience that... Um, um, you know, just, um, you know, like Sally always says, reach out and touch somebody, talk to them, smile at them, be happy. Um, I think our lives have turned into very busy lives, and sometimes we have a tendency to forget to smile and talk because we're so focused on getting things done. Yeah. And sometimes that smile and that care just means a lot. So it's pretty cool stuff. You never really know. You never the know. Impact that it has. That's what my little granddaughter does. She's three years old. Her name is Lily, and she'll just all of a sudden she'll say to me, she'll say, Grammy, you just never know. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Out of the mouths of babes. I can't tell you how much I've really, really enjoyed having you here. Thank you so much well, for thank coming, you. both of you. And you have to sign. I think you've done this in the past, but you can put another one up there Love anyway. To. One of our little um, coins to go on. The, I'll give you an angel one. Thank you. Because you are an angel. You are too, Joe, though. You're going to get the two little guys. Thank you. And if you would do that, I really, really appreciate it. And, you know, you have been such a gift to this community in giving us all an opportunity to reach out and make a caring connection. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sally. Thank you. You wouldn't want to keep these <laughs> pens. <laughs> <laughs> and here is a You Matter coin for you Thank because you. you do matter. And one for you, Joe. Thank you very much. You do matter. And this has been really neat. I want to thank you so much for being here. This has been great. And I want to thank all of you for being here. And until next time, keep on making those caring connections. Bye-bye. <laughs>